Alright guys, and welcome to Starry Flowers, and it's another game made by Nom Nom Nami, and it's about two witch boys who fall in love. So, it's a simple, straightforward story. It's our character Periwinkle. First, I'll Periwinkle in the game Astrid's Garden and the Wandering Wolf series, so that's where I know him from. Hello, welcome to the deliciously romantic tale of my first love. There's just one thing before we begin. I can grant you the power to choose my accessories at various points of the story. I'm being very gracious to offer such a thing, you know? If you use it, you had better make me look as adorable as possible. Don't worry, I will. This little feature has no effect on the story otherwise. It's simply for your entertainment, should you wish for it. Would you like to enable the dress up feature? Yes, let's accessorize. Then without further ado, let's get ready for my first day with Pastel. Oh yes, and our first date was with Pastel, which is from Gumdrop, light earrings, dark earrings, white ribbons, blue ribbons, flower crown, the royal crown, cat ears, bunny headband, angel halo, demon horns. I like the earrings better. Get the light earrings. Choker, dark choker, flower choker, blue flowers, fairy wings, sparkles, dragon sparkles, demon wings. Let's go back. Let's do this. Love favorite? Oh, my favorite? Chapter 1 is the first date. Today, I met a boy at a candy ca shop. The moment I saw him, I just knew I couldn't leave without flirting a little. He was so delightfully flustered, which of course only made him that much cuter. When I told him to meet me here, he can only manage to nod in response. So cute. Ah, uh, my favorite type to pursue. <laughs> Gosh. Ah, there he is now. I didn't keep you waiting too long. I still look at you. And here I thought you looked plenty good in that uniform. My heart was unprepared. Sorry, is it too much? I can change. My, but I haven't even fully seen what's under that cloak of yours. It'd be such a waste to change prem prematurely. I see trembling. Ah, right. Forget it then. Besides, it will be my pleasure to unwrap you later on, my sweet. He's just going, he's just very straightforward. Ah, uh, now shall we head to dinner? Okay, lead the way. I truly didn't expect it. He definitely seemed the type to have a more modest sense of style. Thigh highs with only a short skirt? Or was it a dress? I only briefly glimpsed it. It was a short skirt, right? I, I'm quite looking forward to seeing more tonight. Oh man. There is 16 plus stuff in here, so. The restaurant I decided on is one in my usual rotation, good for a quiet, comfortable evening. For a variety of dates, you must have a variety of locations in mind. Tonight's mood is romantic rendezvous. It's a little high-end, though not overtly so, just enough to make the night feel special. But still slice into the booth, following Periwinkle's lead. One hand holds his mantle in place, while the other brushes his bangs aside anxiously. Is this your first time? Huh? Coming here, I mean. What did you think I was asking? Uh, uh no, nothing. I've never been here before. It seems fancy. I'm a fan of the atmosphere. The food isn't bad either. Now, let's get a few formalities out of the way, shall we? First and foremost, your pronouns. Oh, um, I just use he slash him. What about you? The same, though I don't necessarily mind being called by others especially considering my presenta presentation. Uh, understandable. Next, expectations. I consider clarity in this regard to be a key part of ensuring we both enjoy ourselves to the fullest. I do this sort of thing often, you see. As such, I have a couple of brand rules to establish. Sure, I'm actually glad you brought it up. Oh? I'm not looking for anything serious. In fact, I just kind of prefer when it's just a one-night stand. Oh wait, one-night thing. I read that wrong. 
Hmm, we're on the very same page then. Um, not that I mind if, you know, we end up wanting to do this again some other time. That's quite likely for me in this case. Certainly, I'm open to that as well. Did you have any other grand rules? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you nervous? Yes. You can tell me to stop if you're still feeling too overwhelmed. That's the other rule. I, um... I like feeling overwhelmed. To an extent. I had assumed as much, but to hear you admit it outright? Ah, but still. In that case, I'll do my best to overwhelm you, my sweet. <laughs> Yes, this was shaping up to be a wonderful night indeed. The waiter came to take our order. I went first to give him my sweet date a, cha a chance to compose himself. With our food ordered, but still finally drops his mantle to reveal... My, my, so it was a cute little dress after all. That was a dress. Oh, and here I thought you were saving the surprise for after dinner. Sorry, um, I started feeling awkward with the lecture layer. Don't apologize, my only lament is not getting to take it off myself. Okay. <laughs> You'll save the last few layers for me, won't you? Mm hmm. That's all that matters then. I'm having the time of my life, and by the looks of it, so is Pastille. I live to tease cute witch boys. How fortunate that I came across the sweetest one today. I food arrives before Pastille is able to recover. You can't even look the waiter in the eye. How adorable. Now I mustn't overindulge before we even eat our meal. There'll be plenty of time after dessert. But still takes a few bites of his food before speaking up. So, Periwinkle, what do you do for a living? Just I tease you until you're barely able to speak? Yes, besides that. My line of work, then, hmm, I suppose I can tell you. I'm an aeromagician. I specialize in creating pleasant scents. Periwinkle tugs his wand out of his sleeve and lightly taps the candle on the table. In a small burst, the atmosphere shifts around the pair. The candle's original aroma is quickly forgotten as it's replaced by something new and cozier. Oh, that is nice. What smell is that? I'm no good at pinpointing stuff like this. Vanilla, I thought I suited you, although... I'm starting to think a more lustful scent might have been a better fit. What does that even mean? Just that you've done nothing but exceed my expectations. I'm not doing anything. But still retreats behind his glass of water, overwhelmed by embarrassment once again. I did say I'd go a little easier on him, didn't I? Ah, he's just too irresistible. Anywho, I bottle and sell scents like this one. It's very lucrative work once you build a reputation for yourself. Ah, sounds fulfilling. What about you, Pastil? What kind of magic do you specialize in? Oh, I had mostly been living without magic until recently. Without magic? I can't imagine. It's not so bad. I mean, humans do it, so why not? I suppose that's true. I very directly make a living off of mine, so I find myself in quite a bind if I wasn't able to use it. Not that I'm by being bound from time to time, you know. Okay, making your needs known. How do you keep doing that? Every time I think we're talking about something innocent. Ah, oh, I just can't help myself, can I? Deliberate word choice, my sweet. Would you like me to hold back a little more? No, it's okay. I was just kind of impressed. We finish up our meals and decide on sharing a slice of strawberry cheesecake for dessert. I still deliberately leaves the larger bits of strawberries for me. I wonder, is it because he doesn't like them, or is he just that kind? I don't get it. Either way, this has quickly become my most favorite date of the past few months. Tell me more about yourself, Bastille. I'm afraid the only thing I know is that you work at the renowned Atelier Suite. Oh, well, um, there's not much else to know. Sure, there's plenty more than just that. Any hobbies, perhaps? Uh, cleaning, maybe? Any non work related hobbies, dear? Sorry, I never know how to answer these types of questions. My best friend is an alchemist, so I've recently been going on little adventures to help gather ingredients for her craft. Now there's something interesting. Other than that, I honestly don't get out much. I have my hands full running the store. So diligent. Does that mean this is your first night out in a while? Oh uh, yes, I guess it is. I'm all you were going to share with me then. Yeah, I don't think I ever would have tried this place if you hadn't brought me in. So it's been worth it so far. Thanks, Periwinkle. The 
table had been long been cleared, and our conversation continued through the night. This place is never too busy, which always leaves me free to linger here without the guilt of taking any much needed table space. No longer the date, no more satisfying the finale, if that's something I live by. Rushing straight to the climax inevitably gets a bit dull after a while. I want to enjoy this night to its fullest. Mm-hmm. But still, do you see the witch at that table over there? Hmm? Don't be too obvious now. The one with the tall hat, you see? Uh, yeah, I see them. I brought them here about two weeks ago. I guess they agreed that I made a nice date spot. Uh, I am um, actually... The guy sitting across from them, I'm pretty sure I've been with him before. No, surely you're joking, but still. Shh, shh, don't say my name so loudly. Just keep your head low, I'm sure he will notice. Oh, he just looked this way. Ah, only kidding. Perry. Oh, a nickname already? We're moving so fast. You're the one who's been calling me my sweet all night. Well, you are, aren't you? Whose fault is it that you share a name with Candy? Not mine. Still, do you think those two make a good couple? How should I know? Just imagine the kind of person I go on a date with then, and pair them with the other. And what kind of person is that? You, for one. <sighs> Maybe they wouldn't be so good together. My, am I supposed to take offense to that? Nah, that guy was just kind of pushy. Hmm, <laughs> you're too much, but still. eventually made our way out of the restaurant that night. It had gotten quite late already, when's the last time I stayed until closing? There was never a moment of awkward silence between us, only Pastel's embarrassed pauses, clear attempts to steer his mind away from the debauchery. As he wandered back into the night air, he was the first to speak up again. You could have at least let me cover the tip. Nonsense, I'm the one who asked you out tonight, you don't have to cover a thing. In fact, I prefer if you didn't cover... Okay, I saw that one coming this time. You don't have to say it. Too easy, hmm? <laughs> but really, it's a shame to hide such a cute outfit from the world. I don't have the confidence. Ah, uh, it reminds me of my youth. You'll get there, my sweet. One day, you'll be able to toss aside any feelings of inadequacy or all sorts of daring outfits with pride. No, it's not a matter of self-esteem or anything. It's just, if anyone I knew saw me in this, I would die. So that's how it is, hmm? I'm being treated to a more intimate side of this witch boy right now. We walk together under the street lights until we reach our original meeting place. Would you like me to escort you home? No, that's okay. Then if you don't mind, my place is just down the street. Perhaps you'd like to accompany me? Yes, I mean, I wouldn't want to have you walk alone in the dark. Such a gentleman. Prank would go expertly slides his hand up and down Pastel's mantle, linking arms as they go along. They walk in comfortable silence towards Periwinkle's house. Well, this is me. I had a most lovely evening. Thank you for accompanying me to dinner tonight. I had fun too. Thanks for inviting me out. Pastel fidgets as if he has something to ask but can't find the words. Pastel. Periwinkle takes a step closer. Yes? No? No kiss? He leans in, pausing for any sort of reaction. Only for Pastel's lift to clumsily cra come crashing forward. He's in more of a rush than I thought. <laughs> He's strolling again. Then again, I did spend all night winding him up. So cute. Ah, but still, I just remembered. Since we're here, would you like to come in and sample some of my magic? I like that, yes. Very well then. We both knew from the beginning that he would be staying the night, of course. It's just so much more fun drawing it out like this. Ah, but if that case is any indication of things to come, I may have gone a little overboard tonight. If so, we're in quiet for a sleepover. Sorry about the mess, I just haven't found the time to tidy up. The door closes Lottie from behind them. When Bastille doesn't respond, Periwinkle turns back to face him. Still's back is against the door as he fumbles to untie his mantle. He's completely run out of patience, hasn't he? <laughs> and I'm afraid I simply have no choice but to indulge him. Oh my god, but still, he's being pinned down. Hmm, I 
shouldn't keep you waiting a second longer now, should I? Uh, but I still need to change it to something a little easier to take off. <laughs> Looking this good comes at a price, you see. I promise I won't keep you waiting. Uh, okay. Periwinkle gives him another peck on the lips and leads him through the cluttered living room to his bedroom door. Alright, it's gonna get steamy from here on out. <laughs> Chapter 2, Conjured Fragrance. Okay, maybe you won't see it. <laughs> oh! It took me ages to get out of bed that morning. Why is the room a mess? My god. After all, I just couldn't stop thinking about how absolutely adorable Bastille was. He scrambled out of here almost as soon as he woke up, saying he couldn't be late for work. Such a shame. Would have been nice to get one last round in. <laughs> I didn't get a kiss goodbye, though. Ah, it's nice to feel like a housewife for a moment. But I should get to work, too. I have an order to fill, don't I? Barry Winkle finally rolls out of bed and gets ready for work. The order in question is for a nearby apothecary. Did you know? Air magic like mine is actually quite good for you. It's got nothing on actual healing magic, but the calming atmosphere it creates does wonders for one's mood. This particular batch is meant to help with insomnia, which is ironic considering how late I stayed up with us still. <laughs> Oops, can't be getting distracted now. I really need to finish up these last few bottles. Periwinkle closes his eyes and draws his wand. Large drops form at its tips, falling into the large, empty bottle one by one. With each drip, the bottle's contacts, contents swell, and after only the fifth drop is completely filled. Perfect. Ah, oh, so much easier to finish these with a clear mind. I can't help it if it feels a, if a refreshing night out is the only way to regain my focus. Oh, cow. Although I probably could have gotten one of these done last night, but still I hadn't been so impatient. No, no, I mustn't let my mind wander too far from work now. Periwinkle fills the remaining bottles, screwing the lids on as he goes. There. Mm -hmm. Now my house is going to smell like lavender. I better head out before I'm lulled to sleep by my own magic. Oh, accessorize. Alright, uh... Let's see here. Um, I don't know. I still like the light earrings. I still like the earrings. I'll still keep these. Light choker, dark choker, flower choker. Eh, maybe we'll do a dark choker. Let's do that. The apothecary is only a short walk away, but I've never imagined managed to walk in its doors on time. How? Perhaps because it's so close, I always underestimate the time it takes to reach it. I can hear the owner tapping her foot with impatience as soon as I open the door. Astragolus, I have that special order ready for you. What ass is Astragolus? Is it a flower name? Because it sounds like a flower name, right? You're late again, Periwinkle. Lost track of time, you'll forgive me, won't you? You are literally my only provider who has no respect for appointments. That's simply not true, I never miss a date. There's a problem, you were out getting laid again, weren't you? How vulgar, I had a very romantic evening with a very cute boy. Who then ended up sleeping over? Well, you had all week to fill the order. Try getting it done in advance next time. Yes, ma'am. Now, let's see what you brought. I've worked with Esther Gallagher for a few years now. That was been a few years. She's completely immune to my charm, and shocked me to say the least. But it's meant we've been able to remain good friends all this time. Or, hmm, let's see. Esther Gallagher, would you consider us to be good friends? I put up with you. My, but you don't put up with anyone. You must really like me. You got a favor to ask or something? Is that what you're getting at? No, I was just thinking of how to categorize our relationship. Business associate. Works just fine, doesn't it? Come now, surely you don't consider us to be closer than that. I know better than to get involved with you, Periwinkle. Why, whatever do you mean? You're too dazzling. I take that as a compliment. Great, now will you stop distracting me? I'm trying to count. Yes, def we're definitely good friends. Too dazzling, though. I'm not sure there is such a thing. And what would be wrong if with it if there was? What point is there in not shining as brightly as one can? 
Astragalus finishes counting the bottles, sighing in fang aspiration as she marks them off her checklist. You may always be late, but you deliver quality every time you're consistent, if nothing else. The weeding's a part of the fun. It builds excitement, mind you say. Nope, just builds frustration for me. But at least you always come through. She unlocks a small drawer behind the counter and takes out an envelope with Periwinkle's name scribbled on it. Use the rest of your payment. Don't spend it all once a place. No, oh, I couldn't if I tried. Really, you're too generous. Ashigali rolls her eyes and begins stocking the shelves with their new inventory. Two or three orders a month, that's all it takes to support myself entirely through this apothecary. I do believe my magic is really worth so much, but who am I to complain? It's certainly a more favorable balance compared to the kind of work I was doing years ago. You would wreck me as a model, weren't you? And I do enjoy the freedom, the excessive amount of time I have for partnering for dates. Ah, and on that note, with all that business out of your way, would you like to hear about my date? Would I like to, not necessarily. Please, Astralagus, as someone with no romance in your own life, the least you can do is live precariously through me. The no romance thing is by choice. I listen to you gush for your own damn sake. For my sake? Yeah, I'm afraid you might actually implode if you have no one to talk to about this stuff. I'm actually making a noble sacrifice every day that you come in here with new tales of romantic conquest. Hmm, if you're truly suffering, I shall detest. That's the thing though, I do like seeing you all worked up over something, even if I don't understand it myself. Ah, so there is a mutual benefit. You'll listen then? Yeah, at least until I get all this put away. After that, I'm kicking you out for the day. Fair enough. I better be Reef then. He's the absolute cutest thing. I picked him at the candy shop yesterday. Fluffy pink hair with golden eyes, naturally rosy cheeks that make him look as if he's always a little embarrassed by something. He's shy, but not the type that becomes paralyzed in the bedroom. Periwinkle, for the last time I do not need to hear about bedroom stuff. I wasn't giving any details. Although the details are the best part. This is a safe for work zone only. Break that rule and you're out of here. My apologies, I'll refrain. Anyway, my point is he's extremely cute. Adorable, in fact. Right, so stand it fair for you? Absolutely not. If he was just your average cutie, would I be emphasizing this cuteness so much? I don't meet these people, so it's all the same to me. How can it be? The intensity is so drastically different, perhaps so intense, that I'm having trouble explaining it properly. I'll say, all you've really told me so far is that he's cute and shy. He's kind as well. He saved the best part of our dessert for me without even asking. Wow, I would have led that with that one. Oh, enough of your sarcasm. When all my favorite details are off lesson. Limits. What do you suppose I'm left with? Well, what really matters is that you had a good night, even if it meant you couldn't get here on time like I asked. Ah, I'm already hoping to see him again, to be honest. Oh yeah? Don't hear that off you. <laughs> Look at that I read today. Never hear that from you very often. Really, but I've gone on death second dates all the time. This guy's got a name? Hmm, I don't kiss and tell. No, actually, you tell me about everyone you kiss. Come on, if he's really the absolute cutest, cutest, it's a shame to keep him anonymous, right? I'm not like I'm gonna tell anyone anyways. Fine, his name is Pastille. Hmm, even his name is cute, right? Oh, that reminds me, he sold me some candies that share his name, would you like to try? Sure, how could a witch turn down free candy? Periwinkle digs into his bag and pulls out one of pas the pastilles. What's a pastille? That's a candy, but I've never heard of pastille as a candy. I feel like that was a dessert. He has a candy to Rostrologus, who promptly unwraps it and pops it into her mouth. Hmm. Oh, these are good. Where'd you say this candy shop was? Not far from here. I'll give you the directions. Shortly after telling Astralgus where to find Atelier Sweets, she unceremoniously kicked me out. She'd long finished putting away all those bottles that I weigh, after all. With money in my pocket and no more work to be done for the moment, I'm free to begin pursuing my next date. <sighs> Sounds like a perfect job, to be honest. Wherever shall I go? It's a weekday, too. Early for parties, truly for drinks. I suppose I could return home and straighten up the place, however. 
How would I busy myself with chores when I could be celebrating another order successfully filled? Before Periwinkle could decide on where to go, a familiar witch would purchase him. Periwinkle? Oh, Cassia, so lovely to see you. Hey, I'm so glad we ran into each other. How to describe Cassia? She's exceedingly cuddly. We met at a party one night, during which she latched onto my arm and never let go. Quite endearing. Since then, we've gone on little dates from time to time. She really loves my magic, so I tend to spoil her whenever we're together. Did you need something, dear? Ah, oh, yes. I tried coming over last night, but you didn't seem to be home. Oh, you came to visit me? I'm flattered. I must have been out to dinner at the time. Sorry that I missed you. Oh, it's okay. I was mostly looking to talk. So, um, if you're available right now, do you want to go to a cafe? That sounds perfect. I would love to. We take our seats at the nearby cafe. It's a pleasant, stunning little place. I've come here often with all sorts of other witches. Cassia orders her usual hot chocolate with extra marshmallows while I decide on a simple rose tea. Oh, Periwinkle, would you... Could you make my marshmallows smell like roses too? With pleasure. Periwinkle's wand drops from his sleeves and he gives Cassia's cup a quick little tap. Yay! It really smells like just like roses. Just as you asked, dear, it may slightly affect the taste, so let me know if you like the spell done done. Cassia dips her spoon in and lips the marshmallow to her lips, blowing on it lightly before popping it into her mouth. Mm, no, it's wonderful. You truly can't find joy in any little moment. Such a delight. Definitely a contender for the title of absolute cutest witch, though I would call her absolutely cute rather than the absolute cutest. It takes more than cuteness alone to earn the title of absolute cutest witch. That's where the difference lies, of course. But what am I thinking? How rude it is to begin ranking my dates in such a way. I must be stuck in the thought from my earlier conversation with Astrologus, trying to put Bastille's cuteness into words. He really is something special. Ah, it's all in the contrast. His polite, well-mannered, and proper exterior, concealing such intense desire, begging you to make the first move, then going ahead and taking it on his own as soon as you. Enough of that. There's someone else in front of me now, isn't there? Cassia continues happily sipping her hot chocolate before I'm speaking up again. Oh, I miss you, Periwinkle. I've been so busy with packing, I haven't had a chance to see you at all. Packing? And just where are you headed off to? Oh, that's right, I never had a chance to tell you. I'm finally moving in with my partners. In ten more days, the three of us will all be sleeping in the same bed. Oh, that sounds cozy. Congratulations. <laughs> thank, thank you. I've looked forward to it for so long. Sounds like you're about to enter a lovely domestic life. You deserve it. Aw, I'm really happy. But um, speaking of my partners, you've still never even met them. True, but I can imagine you're wonderful, just from how you talked about them. Right, but um, what if you didn't have to imagine? That's what I've been wanting to talk to you about. I was hoping we might all be able to go on a group date sometime. Oh? Yeah, because, like... I just think you're so wonderful, Periwinkle. I want them to know you, too. Hmm, Abdullah sounds like fun. I'm a bit... Wait, before you say no, you're both very easygoing and so loving and nice. I can promise it won't be overwhelming. That, unfortunately, isn't where the issue lies, my dear. I know you say you didn't want to get involved before, but I just know that we could all get along so well. I'd like to reassure you however I can, but I understand if you still turn me down. Matters of love are so tricky, aren't they? I still recall the first time something like this was asked of me. I had been nervous going in, but I had also never entered a group before. I attributed my anxiety solely to that. However, quickly became clear that I was just wasn't suited to it at all. I do love to spoil each of my partners, but strictly one at a time. Perhaps I was left scarred by the breakdown in communication, the passionate fires of a long established romance. Surely Cassia and her partners are magnificent people. It may indeed be fun for a night. But becoming entangled in committed relationships is something I've always avoided from the beginning, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is all very sweet of you, but I do have to decline. Aw, um, I can't help but feel a little brokenhearted. I'll apologize. Truly, it's nothing personal. Oh, I know. I don't take offense or anything. It's just sad. 
now that I'm going to be living with them and knowing you don't want to meet them, I think it's best we just break things off. Yes, I agree. As you said, it's for the best. I hope we can still be friends, though. Of course. I'm sure our paths will cross every now and then. Yeah, thank you for always treating me so well, Periwinkle. Mm-hmm. It's my pleasure. Even casual relationships can end in breakups like this. This is largely why I tend to prefer one-night affairs. Things can just be so become so messy as they need to involve. As Cassia and I go our separate ways, I can't help feeling a little blue. Perhaps I'll return home for the day after all. Periwinkle quickly changes into something more comfortable, dropping his back unceremoniously onto the couch. I could use an afternoon nap. Yes, that's precisely what I needed. I'll wake up feeling refreshed and ready to go back out on the town. He shoves some blankets aside and collapses onto the couch, and when he does, the contents of his back spills onto the floor. Ah. When he's leaning over to gather it up, he notices the candies from before. Was I too hasty in saying I hope to see Bastille again? I suppose I've forgotten the feeling of not being enough for someone. Usually these things tend to dis dissipate naturally, without conversation or notice. So when they don't, it stings. Periwinkle scoops up the candies, dropping all but one of them into his bag. He settles into a place on the couch, nestled in a tangled mess of blankets and cushions, and unwraps his chosen pastel. It is sweet, though. What a shame that would be if I ever got to taste it again. That's right, I can never resist the promise of an entertaining night, no matter what may come down the line. I'm a hopeless hedonist, after all. What does hedonist mean? Nothing to be done about that. Let fate decide then. If he comes, he comes. If we never meet again, I can always hold on to the memory of our perfect date. Several hours later, there's a knock at the door. And right under the doorstep, Perimple is pleasantly to strive to find... A spell! Me, but still, I wasn't expecting to see you again so soon. And treating me to another cute new look, no less. Sorry, I, um, I couldn't stop thinking about... I mean, I realized last night I never actually got to sample your magic, the sense you mentioned. Oh, that's right. We were quite preoccupied, hmm? Uh, yes, that's why I'm here. He finally manages to make eye contact, but quickly averts his gaze once more. Um, were you in bed? Sorry, I shouldn't have come so late. Mm, these aren't even my sexiest pajamas. I didn't say anything about that. But to answer your question, no, I wasn't. Although I did take a nap earlier this afternoon, I'm otherwise been enjoying a relaxing night in. I'm so very glad I didn't miss, <laughs> didn't end up going out. I wouldn't miss on this flustered mess. <laughs> Would you like to come in? Still nods vigorously in response. It's still a bit of a mess in here. I hope you don't mind. There's a path, though. Pass through. I've seen worse. Oh, maybe I'll let it spiral further into chaos, then. I'm just so competitive, you know? I'm not sure that's a competition you really want to win. Hmm, perhaps not. Paramuku carefully steps over some of his clutter to dig through one of the boxes in the far corner of the room. Ah, here they are, my personal favorites. This row here contains some of the more potent scents, most of them for relaxation, things to calm the nerves. The rest I just happen to like. Sweet scents like strawberry, banana, bumble, gum, mango. Mango sounds nice. Is there a reason you're only naming candy flavors? Hmm, must be a coincidence. Still picks out an unlabeled bottle filled with a pale blue pink liquid. What's this? Ah, oh, watch out. That one's a aphrodisiac. Oh. Hmm, we'll see about that. Don't no sniff it. But still locks his eyes with Periwinkle as he opens the vial without hesitation. How bold. He's drilling again. Oh, it's Peach. <sighs> I was expected it to be overpowering. Yes, well, that. I don't know how to say it right. Aphrodisiac bit was a lie. I'm glad you liked it. You're really good at this type of magic. I've never done anything like it. Would you like to try it on? Hmm? Oh, no. I don't do perfume or cologne or anything like that. You never tried it? 
Oh, so would you say you're a perfume virgin then? I'm, I'm not. Who even says things like that? In my line of work, you see surprise. It's probably just you. Mm, maybe so. If you're not going to try it, I'll have to back. I'll have it back now, please. I could try. I just don't know how I'm supposed to apply it. May I? He still nods, handing over the small vial. Rankle steals the opening with his fingertips and swiftly tilts the bottle over and back. Here. He lightly rubs the spot on Pastel's necks, engulfing them both in the pleasant scent of his magic. Their eyes meet, neither of them daring to, to make the first move. Hmm, maybe the aphrodisiac bit wasn't a lie after all. Pastel breaks the spell, rushing forward with a sudden kiss, and then retreats just as quickly. Uh, sorry, I just... It certainly is impulsive, not that I mind at all. I'm more than happy to go along with your little game, Pastel. Oh no, my own magic is working too well. I guess there's no choice but to have my way with you, my sweet. Oh, no. <laughs> Again, the still half-hearted protests end there. Rankle's hands were already upon him and would continue to be for the rest of the night. Alright, so those girls got, those two got it on for another night. Now we're on chapter 3, miss, Missteps. Alright, um, I think I'm gonna end the episode here. So, I'm gonna end it here. Overall, it's very funny. I thoroughly am enjoying this game. I always enjoy Num Num Navi's game. I think it's really fun to play. So, see you guys in the next episode.